Okay, so I was walking through Dollar Tree, saw some tools, wonder if I could use these for ceramics glass. Hey class, welcome back, Mr. G here. Today we're going over some new tools to use in ceramics class. So I went to Dollar Tree, picked up some of their kitchen tools and figured, hey, let's try and see what we can use these in class. I was strolling through Instagram, came across this awesome ceramics out of China. Shaman Ceramics, I don't know if I'm pronouncing them right. I know that it's a group of people. Uh, it's not one guy, but one guy's mainly used in most of the videos. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of his stuff. Just love seeing somebody work a piece of artwork, master level carpentry and exquisite skill just in action. Just beautiful piece of work. So it got me thinking, as I'm watching this, I'm like, I could buy some of those tools either really cheaply or for a dollar at Dollar Tree. So, so went to Dollar Tree, found some uh, really basic kitchen equipment and decided hey, this will work just fine for what I'm trying to do. Uh, first off, we have the square, I don't know, I kind of, I usually use this for tea personally. Um, I have a big jug that I make tea in and I stir it up, get the sugar in there at the bottom because I'm from the south and our tea is sweet. Um, from there we got like a wooden spoon, so like a uh, two wooden spatula mallet pieces. Um, pancake flipper, this one is Betty Crocker brand, they sell Betty Crocker at Dollar Tree. I didn't know that, but hey, handy tip. Um, regular rubber spatula, pizza cutter, so five dollars for all the tools. Now you could get multiple versions of this and use a piece of sandpaper. Uh, take it to a saw and cut different shapes out of this which would be great now can we use these to make something to make a teapot and clay definitely case in point I have mine right here uh, made a little lid just like he did in the video now we'll say this, this is the first time I've ever done this so there's a lot of room for improvement but for the basics of what you can do totally achievable using just these hand tools um, that you'd get at Dollar Tree. So you don't have to go out and buy some expensive tools. Now, is it cool to have the expensive tools? Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. But is it a necessity? Not really. You can use a lot of these things to, to, to make the, to, to bridge the gap. Now, one thing that is specialty that I will say that you definitely need uh, that you just can't buy at Dollar Tree that I found at my Dollar Tree, you could probably go to like a thrift town and get a Lazy Susan or something, is the uh, pedestal piece. So the pedestal that I, that I'm working with, uh, this one's Amico brand. It's that s aluminum, solid aluminum piece. Squeaks really bad. Needs more WD-40. He had a really nice one that he was using in the video. Uh, they make they make large ones and make small ones. Uh, the ones that he uses mainly work off a ball bearing system. Uh, so you get a lot more smoother action. This is the one that I have is just that lifted pedestal so it's off of that one center post it's gonna squeak it's not gonna necessarily spin perfectly flat the whole time like his would um, so if you got an extra couple bucks go buy a really good one there they do come in handy long term now for the process here I'm using very similar tactics to what he's using except instead of the big mallet which I've got for printmaking but because it's coated in wax I don't want to put clay on it uh, because it just doesn't work when you're doing batiks so instead of that what I have is Using my rail system here and a uh, rolling pin, rolling out sheets of clay. Definitely want to roll out a couple sheets of clay. You want to get enough pieces together so that you're not going to be having to kind of stop, start, stop, start again. Uh, trying to get this action to go as quickly as possible so that I can make sure that well, while I'm teaching it, my students are understanding it and able to do everything a lot easier, uh, as well as any other teaching people that you guys understand how these things work. So starting off with that first sheet of clay, once I've rolled out that sheet of clay, kind of tapering one side of it to give that nice round shape. Once the round shape is on there, I've got uh, several small yogurt cups that we use as to hold our slip. Each of my students, and because we're trying to be proper and using proper safety measurements, I have already doled out all of my classes, have um, buckets and tables of who has what supplies when, so that we can make sure that no student is touching supplies uh, within a 24 hour period, which gives me enough time and my and my custodial staff to get in and help desanit or help sanitize, not desanitize, help to sanitize all the equipment in between classes so that no kid is uh, touching pieces 
that somebody else has touched uh, recently. I'm always trying to give you guys more tips. If you guys have tips, as always, throw them down in the comments below. Start that conversation with all of us so we can help uh, each other during these times. I'm using a fettling knife to cut most of my stuff while it's uh, when it's not on the board. Um, it, I actually forgot I had the pizza cutter until later on, so I didn't even get a chance to use a pizza cutter on this, but it'll work just as good as a fettling knife. I've used it um, on other projects just the same where I need to cut that long strip of clay. It works really good for that. Once you've rolled out the clay, gotten a nice sheet, and you've worked it around, you've sealed all the seams together, next thing to do is to begin the shaping process now when i first started shaping i did try the pancake spatula because i thought this was going to be good it's a nice wide spa space i can hold it really uh, right by the the top of it right here so that it's a lot easier to control with my wrist instead of using the handle and you're having to use a wider smacking pattern and the thing is is these things are it's that non-stick plastic and the clay wants to stick to non-stick stuff. Basically, if it's not wood, the clay is going to try and stick to it. That's the best tip I can give you. So, these uh, the flat wooden spatula is the best number one thing that I was using. Uh, you, again, you can hold it close so that you can do light taps. You can hold it further back so you can smack really hard to create a different shape. Uh, I usually use these like if I'm making triangular or octagon kind of cups. Um, those one this kind of a, a tool is what you really want to use for those things. You can use the wooden spoon, but the wooden spoon sometimes is, um, it has a curvature that takes away from the structure that you're trying to do. Most of the time you want it to keep it flat so that you're doing um, small variations to keeping it as round as possible. Now, as I'm keeping, as I'm uh, beating the clay into submission, I'm using the pedestal to keep that piece rotating around like I would at, on the wheel and keeping that constant rotation going on, it helps me make sure that I'm not double hitting in the same spot, which is going to throw off the balance of the overall piece. Once I've gotten that done, again, I'm, I'm adding more clay around to the top and the bottom and I'm using the, another piece for the top, again, make it a little, oh, a little taller at the top, but also give that more conical shape. I started coming like, I need to start smoothing these things out. Come in, bring in the wooden spat, the rubber spatula. Nice about these rubber spatulas, the top of them comes right off. And guess what we have now that only cost me a dollar instead of like five dollars at a ceramic warehouse? This is a rubber kidney scraper. It's the same thing. It's a silicon scraper tool. And now it's way cheaper uh, and it has a uh, different side. So where I have the nice wide side that you can hold it and grip it, I also have a flat side and then I have one. That, so this is the thicker side that connects to the handle. It's gonna be the same rigidness as one of those, um, you know, the, the kidney scrapers have different um, density grades to them. So one is like super hard, one is firm, one is soft. You have all of that in this one thing. So on the back side of it, you have the harder side. On the front of it, you have the super soft because this one is a lot easier to bend than the one on the back because there's more rubber gasket stuff back here. Uh, you can, because there is a bit of a sharp edge, take a pair of, um, they're in a nail kit. I don't remember what they're called, but it's basically the pliers for your toenails. And you can smooth these things out and get a much more shallow scooping pattern uh, to using that, and that'll work just the same. Again, super cheap, but highly effective. Now, using that to scrape and smooth out most of my piece here, I'm using that as the flexible rib to cover all of the piece. Moving on into the spout and the handle. Again, all it is is a coiled piece of clay. Simple piece of coil that I'm using for the handle and a thicker piece of coil that I'm using for the spout. I am cutting them in half and carving out the inside so that I can make a nice um, large channel. In the video, when you're having to carve in the, the, um, the strainer part of the teapot, he's using this specialty tool. It's got that iron, uh, it's not my, it's a it's a copper tube that's been sliced on one side so that you can create nice circular pieces. I'm like, I don't have anything like that. I'm trying to think of what would I have that even would come close to that. And I have a bunch of recyclable straws. So this one is a plastic straw that has hit the bottom of my dishwasher several times. So like the end of it's melted off. This was gonna go to the trash anyway. So let's, what do we do? We're gonna recycle that. Uh, taking a, uh, a 
X-Acto blade to the front of it, carving off that one side of the piece so that I can cut them in and cut out my little circle pieces. Works just great. I do need to refine this so that it's not a square in. I need to make it more rounded so it'll carve in a lot easier. So once you add the spout on and the tail on, what I'm using there, I'm taking a chopstick or a paintbrush to make sure that my line stays straight. I do think that is an important thing for that he was using because when you're holding the teapot, you do have to think about if I'm holding it back here, the spout is a hunt is a perfectly uh, it's parallel to the pour direction. Uh, you don't want those ones where you're holding it sideways and you're trying to pour it off, or it's like just off slightly. That's going to look weird. So I want to make sure that everything stays good. And then lastly, start working on the spout, coming in with uh, different pieces of clay, stacking them together to make that um, rounded spout piece off the top, and making it a, making just a wonderful piece. So again, there is lots of room for improvement on this. It's by far not the best thing that I've ever made, but did it work? Yes, it worked. Would I recommend having my students do this? Yes, why? Because you can go buy these. You can go buy a dozen of them. Make your own tool set, really cool stuff. Uh, I had fun with it. I'm definitely gonna be doing this again. I think that there's a lot of fun stuff that can be had in making multiples of these. I just think it's gonna be cool. Let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Hope you guys got something wonderful out of class today. Learn something new, learn something. As always, uh, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. So until then, later guys. gave me this idea was I was trolling through the old inst